Hey there folks, so as I promised in the previous tutorial, now we're going to do something related to gradient mapping once again, but to be more precise, we're going to be doing a, a fiery torch texture uh, using our height map in a very sort of convenient way, and we're actually going to be able to paint in and out our uh, fire, which is kind of dandy. So yeah, let, let's just get right into it. So uh, let's grab our material function, uh, gradient mapping function, since we're going to be using that. And let's get our height map. And let's get our component mask all set up right away. And, you know, let's just keep it at R. I think that should be faster and it should suffice. No big deal. Mm, and I mean, right now, if we put it into the diffuse, it will work already. Here we have our texture, our height. Uh, map oh yeah and by the way probably you might want to check out the texture it's pretty simple it's something that you can get with uh you know every single neural map generation software uh yeah it was generated from a photo and the alpha just has the height map well yeah yeah it's just a grayscale map technically not really a height map that much so you can see that but now i think we should probably input some proper colors and you know what, I'm gonna save us some time and I think I'm just gonna copy paste them from another material because, uh, I don't know, I think that should suffice. Uh, there we go, they are not named that correctly, but you see that you get something going and this texture doesn't really have uh, the kind of surface noise or dirt that we could have added, but mm, for our purposes, I think it should do quite nice. Uh, so yeah, anyway, let's keep the materials like that. And now, uh, the other thing that you probably want to do is to set up the UVs. So yeah, let's grab a multiply note. I'm not saying that we're going to be using that right now, but just to imagine that we're building a material, we probably want to have that. And let's just create a, a single uh, parameter for a channel. Let's call it uh, whatever we want to call it, just tiling for X. And that's all we know so far. Uh, yeah, so let's keep it in one and multiply the, the texture coordinates with it and plug it into the UVs. That's uh, kind of a nice setup. And we're probably going to be using that for something else at some point. I'm not really sure, but yeah, let's just keep it like that. And right now, you know what? I actually have a torch mesh that has some sort of vertex colors. So it's going to help us out, you know, for preview purposes. So what you can do is I've actually gone and selected, you can see in the content browser, the mesh. And now let me just get it out of the way. You can click here and you'll get it as a preview. So there we have it. And it actually has some vertex color values. So if you just let me demonstrate, uh, I think it's pretty simple. Like the top part is uh, has the white colors and everything else is black, which uh, yeah will come in handy later on. But now, what we want to do is we want to create a fire, fiery material texture, whatever you want to call it. And for that, let's just use random cloud noise. And yeah, the texture that we're using at this point is just a random collection of mi uh, mix maps or whatever you want to call them that I have. Just Photoshop clouds, those different clouds, uh, filter, passed on, uh, pa uh, well, whatever. You can see what it is, I hope. Uh, so yeah, and for that, we're just going to grab the texture coordinates again. Oh, you know what? We can even do without it. We can just use this one and multiply this for... Uh, uh, y, let's make it, you know, the equal sign, uh, fire tiling, and let's make it something small for now, 0 0.2, multiply the green channel, the green channel, my bad, I know X, Y is wrong, should probably go with R, G, B, A, because that's more obvious, it just seems more correct, you know? But that's not it. We should not plug it into the texture yet because we could do with some panning in here since we're trying to create an animated uh, effect. Uh, so yeah, let's just make it something small like 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Plug it in there. 
And then we need a fire color. That's pretty important. Something that we're going to multiply it with. So yeah, convert to parameter. Um, let's make it bright orange right away. Mm. Well, that should do. And let's just call it fire color and alpha for intensity, just in case. Mm. So now let's grab all our multiply node, multiply the alpha with the color, and then multiply the whole thing with the red channel, which we can see from the thumbnail up top that uh, it's the clouds. And now if we just preview node on mesh, there isn't much going on. And yeah, you see that just because of the small tiling and because we need to turn the animated preview. So now you can see that something's going on, obviously. Now we should probably make it brighter. Let's make it two, I guess. With that kind of color or four, something that's gonna really shine, I don't know. Let's just stop previewing at this point. Uh, we need some sort of a mask and what better mask can we come up with than our gradient map? So yeah, let's just grab it. And you know what we'll, what we'll do since we want uh, our fire to be visible only sort of in the crevices down there, down below, like it's burning, but something on top is not burning yet. Uh, we actually want to invert our gradient slash height map because there uh, the black is the the crevices but we wanted to other we wanted the other way around just just so it would be cheaper so let me just demonstrate this is the way it looks now but when we multiply it by our inverted gradient map you see what we're getting that looks uh well yeah that looks not that bright at this point but you see that there is something going on under the surface and this is already pretty cool but yeah i don't know let's just make it a bit more red because i'm not a fan of the yeah something like that and let's just crank up the brightness to 50. there you go now it looks like it's burning a lot more yeah, let's just stop previewing for a while and let's multiply that by our vertex colors because as you've seen we have a mask in there so that's that makes it very convenient and let's just grab one channel instead of all four so we don't have to multiply all four of them and then we'll just add it into the emissive and that's it as you can see we have our top part glowing being all fiery and stuff and the good part is that it's actually vertex paintable. So now let me just apply this to our material and then I'll just get it out of the way. I'll go and get our mesh. Mm, just a sec. Here's our torch. Uh, no, you know what? It doesn't look very nice. Let's do it in a night environment. Don't save. So yeah, let's just scale it up like 10 times. And now you should see pretty well that it's burning and it's actually pretty damn bright. Yeah, so now it's not that bright. Uh, well, it is at times, <laughs> but anyway, it's not the point. The point is that it is vertex paintable and I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys that it is. Okay, so we have our actor and yeah, I think I, I'm good. I can just paint. And yeah, as you can see, I'm just painting in and painting out the fire underneath the surface because we're multiplying this stuff by the red channel. You can see that it's as easy as that. And I mean, you can put uh, a particle effect on top, but I mean, for us, it doesn't really matter at this point because yeah, you can you just can see how much you can do with, with that stuff, how useful a height map could be and how much use you can get out of just out of just one map and I mean when you're making a level where you have like a fire going on and everything's burning and I don't know building on fire crumbling down and everything consider this technique because uh, it might help you create this effect I mean you can also use a mask uh, a different kind of mask I don't know maybe a different kind of vertex placement you know to make the transition seems a bit more organic 
and I mean there are a lot of you know things that you can do with it but technically it's just a way to show that hey we got a fire going on and this is very cool I hope you guys enjoyed it and as for the other awesome uses for for the gradient map the uh, the height map it's actually very useful to uh, to as a as an opacity mask that's basically the thing because you can just grab the lower channels and you can uh well the lower brightness values if you know what i mean and you can just uh use them as an opacity mask and we're going to be talking about something along those lines right now well not right now but in our next chapter so i hope you guys stick around and get to find out what another use can we find, but not actually for gradient mapping this time, but just the approach that this sort of leads to. Anyway, thanks for uh, yeah sticking around, and I'll see you in the next chapter.